Hello everyone, welcome to the summary video for Minecraft, which we do on Mondays. If you weren't there, this is what happened. We reoriented, we all reorganized, we re messed around with this place down here. I didn't really know what I was going to do when I started playing on them. Last time, sort of sorted out a lot of these uh, carpenter things. You automated a lot of stuff that was tedious. Um, and I thought, hang on. Secret project, and I'll show you the secret project which I finished in between streams. Wireless server. Yeah. <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, I am far away from the terminal. I have come all the way over here. How far away can we be? Not that far. So, the way this works, I have a little wireless device. It takes a lot of AE, hold a lot, it's 39% full. And these little things here have got a wireless access point, right? So there's a range around of a wireless access point around which you can use wireless terminal and it just acts like this normal crafting, uh, not even the crafting terminal, but just an access terminal, which is a problem. So I would like it to be a crafting terminal. Anyway, let's get on to that. <clears throat> In this one, I've put four of these wireless boosters. By default, your range is 16 and for each one of these, you get an extra I'm not actually sure what that's going up by, because that's one meter. That's one bit meter. That's and that, but it's 24. Maybe there's some dodgy um dodgy maths going on in the background. I don't know. Anyway, we're using 24 RF per tick instead of the 16 that we normally are. It's basically one to one RF to the range, but that's quite a lot. I've made a few of these around the base. I've made eight of these. Four of them are in Lawrence's Tower, which is not quite enough, so we should make some more, but we also need to improve our power generation before we can really start doing anything else like that. That bit was easy. Let me show you. Wireless. <coughs> so this bit was just one of these, a terminal, and some of these. So I made all of the recipes. We've already got calculation processes. This is not the most uh, difficult of the processes, one of which involves some horrible... We can't make it. Uh, energy cells are just fluids, and batteries are just carpenter recipe, which Stuff we have. We've made a carpenter recipe for batteries. I think I actually had to add that. Well, I didn't have to. <laughs> the reason I had to add the recipe for batteries into this carpenter was I only needed a couple of them. But then again, I needed a couple of them. That would have involved going to the carpenter, filling up with the stuff, putting the recipe, waiting. That was already full of silicone, so just make it happen. Now we can make batteries. That was that. This thing is easy. It's just a fluids pearl, which is fluids around a pearl. Um, we are kind of running low on fluids crystals though, and we're also running low on surface quartz, uh, quartz fiber stuff. Like that. So the Riley's receiver. This is a little bit of a complex recipe with all the bits that go into it, but I've automated all of that. We made one of those, made one of those. This was an actual pest, so I've had to add a second ME interface here with part one of the ME terminal and the full ME terminal. Now this is causing issues. I think the issues that it's causing is because we're trying to make trying to make surface plates. Trying to make Certus Quartz plates. We don't have any Certus Quartz from which to make it. Okay, that's interesting. Why do you not make uh, But then, Certus Quartz, and there's plates needed, but it's not crafting the plates that are needed. But what happens is, because this recipe here requires Certus Quartz plates, I think when they go into the craft everything chest, it immediately gets pulled out because that's storage for the system. It's very, very low priority storage, which is to say high priority storage, which is to say it's extract only, so it should stay in there um, for as long as possible if you have a high priority on it. Well, I'll show you what Tristan So this, I think we've seen this actually, but I'll show you again. This is the chest where things go, and this storage bus says that Know, things are allowed to be in here. Well, apparently this doesn't work. <laughs> because uh, with the extract only and the high priority should mean that anything that's in here is not considered as long as it's somewhere else. So when we put um, tractable items <laughs> um, as soon as it puts them in there, it goes, oh, I can satisfy the request for more Certus Quartz plates, so they leave again straight away, which is a problem. It's a a bother. This can be easily resolved by finding more Certus Quartz and putting it in the system so that the request for plates satisfied 
Um, no, I just thought of a problem. I'll tell you. Um, did my... Oh, I've got my headphones just turned off. Never mind. Um, let's say we have 64 Certus Quartz plates in. Don't, but let's say we do. So that's my... So the point is, they're there because the interface down there has requested 64 Certus Quartz so called plates, right? And it's crafting. So it doesn't request more than it needs. So as soon as you take some out, it starts making more. Perfect. Problem is, it takes longer to make more of them. So let's say it's put eight in here, right? So as soon as it puts eight in there, it needs eight more for the thing, but it has to make them. But it doesn't have to make them because now they're suddenly in storage. So it's going to go, oh, I've got some. Never mind, cancel the request. No, it's all done. So, hello? Hello? There we go. So, regardless of what you do, as long as you have not got more than enough plates of any type in the system, if they're going in here, they're going to get sucked out immediately, and you're not going to get them, and you're going to have to go and get them. It's a pest. I'll have to think of a way to fix that. And I think it's what Tristan was saying to me the other day. And I thought that we had... We fixed it for most cases. But in this specific case, it's because it's going in that particular... Like if it was for anything else, any auto-crafting thingy that can be done in the 3x3, three three, it's fine. It's going to use them and make more. And if it's for something that you just take them out yourself, you've got them in your inventory. It's specifically when they go into this inventory to do that thing. Then it's a problem. So, this almost needs to be an import bus, you know? Just so that it doesn't... The only reason that's there, well, we've explained why that's there. I'll, I'll, I'm not going to think through this off on camera, but... It's a bother, and I don't know what to do about it, but... Anyway, that's me. Let's see what other people have done. Mike did a lot of stuff which is basically very useful. He ran around building stuff. He made a lot of um, stuff in Lawrence's tower. He's got, Lawrence has got a lot of uh, long-winded processes. I made a lot of terror steel. Definitely finished a lot of quests, perhaps between streams and perhaps yesterday. We did start secret project number three, which is this uh, wildly obvious castle over here. What I think would be cool over here now. The this is this is a modest castle. It's probably not finished. That's fine. Um, have an insight. I haven't explored this yet. But maybe one day, because that looks like a door. Um, if you recall a long time ago, we looked over here, and I flattened this area out to put some stuff in it, but we never did. Um, I like the idea of this being a big entrance. Mountain. Stuff has happened. <laughs> Probably should have happened. Maybe that um, torch melted the snow. You know, like a big sort of dwarven... Gates, kind of Mines of Moria sort of thing. I don't know. With a castle on top of it, which actually, that's very strange. So it looks like don't care. If it attached to a castle which stuck out over this mountain, that would be cool. Anyway, Mike's been doing basically very useful stuff. Pete has done a lot of automation. Um, or, automation? Or just... Yeah, it's automated the picking of the crops. So there's things like this last time. Uh, there's crop interactors, which are not harvesters. They use the crops as if you were right-clicking on them. These things might not. Plant interactors. It's also from industrial foregoing, and I'm guessing it's outputting fluid. Yeah, here. Um, also sludge. So that's basically the same as those. Those are harvesters. I didn't know these existed at the time in my defense, so I would have used um, plant interactors over there if I'd known. Maybe something told me and I didn't bother to read it. But anyway, these things here, they're interacting with these plants, which means that I don't think you need this many, by the way. Because <laughs> you've got a range add-on of plus six, right? So your working area is... Now who said all this is doing, really, is making them happen in parallel, I suppose. Taking a lot of power as well. I don't think you need. I guess it depends how fast you want the plants to be picked because I don't know if they're going to each pick the same 
Because they're all going to cover the same area, right? So unless they're happening out of phase with one another, they're all going to... If they're, let's say the other way. If they're happening in phase with one another, each one's going to try each square at the same time. One of them's going to do it. You're not going to gain anything. They have to be out of phase with each other. So that if a plant grows just after the first one has checked that block, then the next one will come along quickly. Um, and the only way is actually going to be anyway, because if they're all checking at the same time, you don't get any benefit from one of them checking after the other, because they're not. Uh, I forgot my water and I'm thirsty, but we'll do that in a minute. Uh, well, I've done, I guess there's some stuff I can show you soon. Um, but I'm going to show you that right away. Let me pause and I will decide what to show next. Okay, so I've broken a little bit. I, don't, I haven't broken anything at all. Um, just like what we have here, this is what Lawrence is working on. Thermal lily and this thermal lily. Currently on fire, they're very smoky hot. Um, what they're doing is they are creating mana from hot stuff, which in this case is lava. So we have here a fluid placer. Fluid placer is going to, well, maybe don't stand there. <laughs> because uh, redstone mode deactivation. So as soon as the redstone goes away, this will place some fluid. I expect underneath there, where I'm not going to dig in case I break something, there is a 14 to to stand there, but you never know. Um, fluid export, though. So this is going to be full of lava, and there is fluid in the system, the AE system. Old tower's hooked up to the AE system, so you can export fluid into a container that can hold fluid um, in this case, lava. This could be a lot better if we didn't use another redstone. Um, and what it seems to be doing, we've got a comparator here, and a mana splitter. Now, I'm assuming that the mana splitter is balancing all of these, that may be only true because they were empty at the same time. Okay, so uh, is it going into there? I don't know. Um, so these basically should all, should all have about the same amount of mana in them. And when we use some, so what this is doing is quite long. This is outputting an amount from the eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Zero. So everything from here on is zero. It seems to be 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Um, when it gets to 13, it will activate this. This is a not gate, which is turning this into that. Now that's a power of 15, because this is a not gate, so it actually doesn't matter what input you have, as long as there's no input here, it'll output, I'm guessing, for some reason, 15 is the max. It goes from zero to 15. So 15 is the max, so this is outputting 15 because there's no input. As soon as there's input, that's going to output zero. It's high or low, there's new, uh, not something in the middle. Then we've got a NAND gate here, and it's, this is deactivating this one of the NAND gate. That is also active. When this one also turns off, that will turn off. So it's not an, an an AND gate would mean that as long as all are on, that is on. An AND gate means as long as all are off, that is on. This one is not being considered at all, which is something you can just configure it to do. Three inputs, you don't have to use one. This one is being input, which means that it is outputting because not all are off. When all are off, that will turn off and that will trigger. Okay, now in here we've got a timer of 360 seconds, which looks like it's very soon going to tick. When it does so, we're going to get a slightly longer pulse as a result of this repeater, which will be long enough to turn this on, therefore this off, therefore that off, therefore that on, and we'll get some lava, which should happen just now. There you go. Oop, oop. Lava? They've already got sucked. <laughs> Did not take long. So I'm guessing that does not take long to put lava down. But then this is now putting more mana into the system. So one of those uh, thermal lilies picks up that lava and is now shooting. So I'm guessing what's happening is that it takes twice as long for a thermal lily to output all of its mana than that is going round. So each time that goes round once, the other thermal lily will be empty. Please jump. Which means it will pick up the lava and set, set going. Now it, when we got here, one of this one here wasn't going. Um, so I believe that it's actually a bigger margin for error than I just said. 
So it waits a little bit longer than it needs. This one's going to run out at some point. <clears throat> I wonder why you need two. Can you not just spread them both from that? Obviously not, or you wouldn't have two. But they, they're all being pumped into here, and these are filling up nicely. This is because it uses a hideous amount of terra steel, uh, uh, mana to make terra steel. What Lawrence was doing. Because Lawrence was supposed to have done that the other week, and he wasn't here. So, put this dirt back. Another one here. Put one there, it'll break. So you can do this with a slightly more robust redstone and not have to worry about breaking. Your... If you put a block here, it breaks that connection, which is not what you want. You can do it with robuster redstone and then it will just go around the corners, but that's okay. Don't need everything. Um, is this on purpose? I don't know. So that's what Lawrence was doing, plus other stuff. Uh, his semi 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 automated rune creation. So I'm guessing runes, as far as I understand it, anyway, runes are one of those things that require. In this case, it's not the advanced crafting table. I think it's simply the. Um... I think it means these ones. So you have to use a runic altar. The way it's done is to have here. So here's all the runes, and here's some things that. Presumably are. Okay, so all of these require using, require chucking them onto stuff, right? Um, so an ender, uh, what's that called? Mana pearl? Mana pearl. A mana pearl, you chuck it into the mana pool to get a mana pearl, ender pearl, mana pool, mana pearl. So it creates one mana pearl from one ender pearl, just puts it in here, and you know, you chuck it on the mana pool and you get it. I don't see that there is an export of the same thing. So it looks like the system is not being, oh, on, headphones, seriously. The system is not being told that the craft is complete. You have to do that yourself. That's okay, you press, uh, press uh, this button here and just cancel it. You know, Lawrence is probably the person most likely to have forgotten that because everyone else has at least played Minecraft before. He and Tristan have played uh, a version, like a modded version of Minecraft, and Mike is also likely to forget. Nah, sorry, um, but there you go. And again, here we haven't got the so it's not cycling one round like the other um, thing does to tell the system that it's done. It's just letting you. Do it. So the idea here is that it puts all the stuff into the um, chest, and you just grab everything out, put it in, alter nearby. You can automate this more. I think simply you can, because you can throw things onto the altar, and I think this is why you can throw them onto the altar, because you can right click stuff onto the altar, um, and it would you know, create the thing. But if you drop stuff onto the altar, it also goes onto the altar, and it's floating around. Well, so that means you can pipe stuff into, for example, the open crate that we used last week to automate empowering and stuff by dropping it onto the plate and making the laser beam go. This is the same. And in fact, I think the open crate is actually from this mod, from Britannia. So the, it is made so that you could put an open crate above an altar, put things into the crate, and they land on the altar, and then the thing is crafted. I don't know how you tell it to go. Because when you put things on the altar, you then have to hit it with your wand. Say, right, make that thing. I'm guessing there's a way of doing it. I couldn't tell you what it is. <laughs> we'll find out. I have no doubt. I'm nearly going to go around again. So, Lawrence has been automating stuff, semi automating stuff, semi semi automating stuff, as you do. This has not got much liquid starlight left in it. He also made me a Sojourner's Sash, which unfortunately is not working. And the reason I believe it's not working is that I do not have a mana tablet with any mana in it. You have to have mana to... Because this would allow me to step up blocks and go a little bit faster. I'm walking slowly and I'm not stepping up blocks, so it's not working. I am guessing that... Um, mana, and I don't have any. Do that. More stuff needs to be made, so we haven't done it. Uh, okay, I think I'm going to nip over and show you something else. There's a couple of things that happened, actually. A couple of uh, interesting events that you missed, so I'll um, take you over to one of them, and then the other one, so I get to back in a minute. Well, 
Welcome to Stargate SG Vanilla Temple. There's a vanilla Stargate. The address of something. Face camouflage. I see, I see. This is um obviously blue terracotta. You can type things in here. EWD. Look, there's letters on there we read. <laughs> so I guess the idea is that you can find more stargates on other planets and you know, type in the home address, type in their address and just go from A to B without having to worry about rockets and stuff like that. My assumption is that they are extremely fair. Although this one was only you know, 2,000 meters from home. So I wonder how many there are. That would be an interesting thing to find out. Not just that, but also we taught Lawrence about the mechanics of a vanilla, um, <laughs> a vanilla temple, and I'm pretty sure that we fixed it underneath. You probably already know it. Or you with it. Uh, there were once upon a time chests, but uh, it wasn't actually Lawrence who exploded them. I think it was no better. Down here, for some reason, we dug a little further. We found this really labyrinthine. Um, oh, hey, Mike. Dungeon is just absolutely full to the brim of these just squares, <laughs> just square rooms which were full of monsters but now aren't. Well, kind of aren't. They have some bit of stuff over uh, bit of Bit of stuff here and there. Say hi to Mike. Hi, Mike. That is here and there. A lot of them went on and on and on, mostly killing stuff and killed. And uh, looting. There was a lot to loot. And it turned into wood, as if that's a thing relevant. So this is uh, what Rogue, Rogue looks like. Ported into Minecraft. <laughs> because there's absolutely no attempt at making these dungeons look pretty. Uh, nope, there's no no decoration in the rooms. There's just lots of spawners, many of which many of which people broke. Um, and yeah, exactly. And of course, we keep dropping these um, bits of will. That I have no use for and no intention of picking up because I actually threw some trash them um, because they are extremely unhealthy. Uh, I don't think we're using them that much anymore. I'm sure at some point Lawrence will get to a quest where it says, By the way, have you been ramping up your bill? Should have been. Now you need a amount of it. <laughs> we have lots of Tartaric gems full of. Look, there's one. Even one for uh, Endermen, which I guess if we wanted to spawn a friend of you go to the end. It does, uh, it does have a certain charm to it, because how occasional new it's almost a biome of dungeon. Level design, different style. This probably why it's still here. <laughs> Look at it all. I have more to say about this than the Stargate. I don't really know what to say about the Stargate, it's the trouble, because it was just a Stargate. It's just a Stargate, it's not just a Stargate, but it's nothing to do with it. No real concern, I wonder what's up there. Probably the other water. Ah! I have to light up the actual spawn array. Ow! Hit me with a bone. Heck. Why are you hitting me at all? That's it? No. Somehow you are hitting me. Good. Anyway, there's our dungeon underneath our Stargate. I hope eventually we will be in space and therefore able to make uh, Stargate. Now it works. It makes a heck of a racket, by the way. Um, just in trying to activate it and basically death everybody. The random number that he typed in. 
Go away. I will see you in a minute to show you the second kind of fun thing. That Find it. <laughs> well, actually, continue. It will... No, thank you. I would like it on record that my tablet of recall here. And I was expecting it, so I had my pickaxe out. Started digging. There is the grave that I was supposed to connect to. No, I haven't. It's working fine. This is the grave next to it. Uh, and this is where I spawned. There is nothing here. There was not a single cavity for me to spawn in. And yet, there I am. Uh, eight plus six. Shall we? Uh, actually, we learned something. <laughs> Mike was right. I did break the ME system. But how I did that was security terminal. It's not that this is part of the wireless thing. What happens is you put the security terminal down and then wireless card in here, and now it's linked to that. But in order to make that work, you have to create these biometric cards, which are just swallow. Oh, nope. what? Oh, I see. <laughs> it's got the same search. Never mind. So I right clicked on Mike to get this biometric card, and I put it in here. I can probably just do this. Set them all to have everything. Click on people. When people come on, we have to make a card for them, put it in here so that they can use the system. So it blacklists everything. Um, except. Kind of interesting that it's a. Well, I guess it's not. It's just a little storage thing. It doesn't involve the chest. Um, so we have to whitelist everybody. To do everything, and then they have to be on. So I've made one for myself and one for Mike. I've made one for myself. Oh. Maybe a blank one will just let everybody do. I'll bring it back <laughs> when my but uh, no my it worked. Uh, blank card. So I put the blank card in as you saw and made too many cards there. <laughs> but extra cards in case. <laughs> well, just put them all in. It's all the same, right? Uh, I kind of want to destroy them. That was a bit of. Uh, they were a bit expensive. There was a calculation process right there. <laughs> but that's okay. Now everyone can use it again. So let's uh, put this back in here. So this is how you link it. That's by you have to have a security terminal to use the Wi-Fi. Kind of okay. Everything's working again. So all is fair. Right. Cool. Uh, back in a minute. Yeah, so there's a trick to this. I already did it on camera once, I guess you could say, because uh, I just realised I don't actually know if you can hear all of what I'm saying, so I apologise if <laughs> a lot of what I said has been cut out, but I moved my microphone and forgot. Um, there's a trick to this. I did it on camera once already because I did it in a stream. You throw the thing in the corner, and then you throw the thing when you get stuck in the wall. Ready? Hooray! Now we're on the surface of the nether. So what we thought we could do <laughs> is this. It does seem to have worked, actually. Um, we put this tree down. This is the mining tree that we've seen before. And what it does is it hoists um, ore from underneath to the surface, which actually I thought were decaying um, in the overworld. But it seems like in the underworld, they aren't. Uh, Tristan was looking for some very, very rare ore. And this seems like a kind of sensible way of finding it. But no, actually, what is strange? First of all, how did you plant this? Because <laughs> shouldn't there be a, there be a, a dirt block here? Um, this one hasn't done anything. Is this chunk loaded? Is that what it is? It doesn't seem to be. Oh, nothing special up here. The chunks aren't loaded, but 
Um, it's pulled up a lot of Tiberium ore, which is great. This stuff explodes uh, if you're not careful. Uh, it's not a matter of being careful, it's just random. Random, so whilst you're mining it, you, it, just, it explodes whether you're careful or not, but it hurts you if you're not careful. Uh, and this is kind of <coughs> um, precious. We came here looking for this. Some things that we do. I did. You can be a little bit gotten by the lag if you're not careful. Because you go, oh, I'll go and get the stuff. And then the lag says, wait, <laughs> I haven't processed the exploding yet. And then you're there when it explodes. Stop burning. Netherrack. Um, so this experiment, actually, we thought wasn't working and is working. Interesting. But it's only working there. I'm wondering if there's a um, difference between these ones. Now this one, we made a hole underneath to see if it would... Oh dear. <laughs> oh, dang. Um, you know, suck it up. To, we wondered if it was maybe because of the fact of the bedrock here meant that it was pulling it up to the highest surface that was below the bedrock because the bedrock itself is somehow counting as the sky, so it's not going to take it higher than the sky. But we've seen already that it has actually taken it higher than the sky. Um, for some reason, Tristan decided to grow a giant twilight oak as well. I'm than that. Um, but it has worked over there, but not over here. I don't know what this is for. Um, so that was our other experiment, which was well, the other interesting thing that we did was come over here and to try to make these mine woods mine in the nether. And it has worked there and nowhere else, which is very interesting. Now there's a bedrock hole here, as I've noted, but also there is another one which Lawrence found. Sort of a um over there. Sort of a weird rib cage though. Did Lawrence find it? Someone found a rib cage thing. Weird rib cage thing around here, which you can find down here. Maybe these are cl too close together, so only one of them is working. Uh, and this took us down into a very scary uh, place called Nether Fortress, which, if you recall, I was told off for exploring in creative mode. Even just to see if we could get to it. Um, and all these baddies are here and being mean to us. But, I don't care. So I'm leaving. <laughs> The Nether Fortress may be worth an explore. I don't know if there's better than vanilla loot in the chat. I think there should be. Yeah, but I don't. We could probably explore that on the next stream if you were inclined to. I think it might be the same um, Nether Fortress that we can see from where the portal is. By the way, I broke the portal. Pro tip, you can break the portal like, interface with a sword. <laughs> I trying to kill something that was trying to push me out of the portal. I ended up breaking the portal. So, um... That's that. Mike's done a lot of interesting stuff. Lawrence has done as we've seen. Pete has produced uh, more plants and made things work more. And Tristan was basically helping everybody do all those things uh, and inventing things like the, the digging out of the nether. So I think that's all I've got for you this week. If I've missed anything, I'm sure someone will tell you in the comments. But until next time, thanks for watching. I'll see you on Monday, half past seven sharp-ish. And uh, maybe I'll have a burger that time because I'm starving now. Burger. I'll see you next time. Bye.